here are the situations we're going to have a look at today, okay? Now, just to review before we get on to circles, and invariably people sitting around tables, uh, let's think about how we normally do arrangements. So we're thinking of things like this, okay? And you think of, you know, arranging letters in a word, or arranging people in a line, or putting people into teams, or you get the idea, okay? So, thinking about something like, oh, sorry, something like this, okay? Uh, we're thinking of arrangements, we're thinking about not just, not just combinations, but wanting to know, okay, you know, two people sitting in relation to each other in different orders, those matter, okay? As anyone who has sat around a formal table will attest to. So, this is permutations land, okay? When you, when you see this, this is about permutations. So get your head back into that space, right? Now let's think about just normal permutations in a line, right? Uh, if you've got four objects and you want to put them into four places, okay? What was the way that we worked out? There are no replacement, like we're actually putting real objects that can't be repeated. How many ways are there to pick something for the first spot? Answer, four ways, because you got four things, right? And then you got three more people left to put into the next spot, and then two, and then one, right? So this is where we got our, our factorial sort of notation from, okay? Now when you have a look at a situation like this, okay? It looks so similar. You've still got four things, four people, and you've still got four places to put them into, okay? But there's a problem. There's a problem. Well, think about it like this. Let's let's proceed the way we did before. Pick a chair, any chair. Like say this one. How many people can we put into this chair? There are four people I can put into this chair, right? And then you keep going around just like you went this way. And you're like, well, I can put three more people into that chair, and then I've got two left, and then whoever's last to the table gets to sit in that spot, right? So on the face of it, it looks like it's the same, okay? Except the problem is, right, we, we care about order here. We care about order here, okay? And the problem with this is that, well, just like with the permutations and combinations we were looking at before, a whole bunch of the arrangements you'll come up with will really actually be the same, okay? Example, if your four people have, you know, really imaginative names, like, say, oh, I don't know, Savinda, Jungu, Elian, and Martin, Okay, right? I just had to look and make sure you all started with different letters, okay? There's one arrangement, right? There was my, um, you know, first spot, Savinda got in first, then Jungu put in second, and Martin was the last at the table, okay? But, if for instance, Savinda was first, but he, he decided, actually, he likes this table up, sorry, this chair up here, right? And then Jungu still wanted to sit next to um, Savinda, and he still wanted to sit here, <laughs> and then Martin was still left over here, mm -hmm. these arrangements are the same, right? They're still the same arrangements. I'm just looking at it from a different angle, right? Just like, you know, if I showed you this, okay, and so you know, look from this angle or look from that angle, it's like, well, the only difference between these two things is which side you're standing on. All I had to do was rotate, okay? Now, here's the question. How many of these am I going to have? How many extras have I come up with? The answer is, I'll have four times as many as I should. I'll have three extras, right? Because I can rotate this once, and then twice, and then three times. When I rotate the fourth time, I'll literally be back to here, okay? So I have four times too many, okay? So instead of four factorial, what I really have is, 4 factorial on 4, right? And that 4 comes from the fact that I've got 4 spots and 4 people to put in those spots, okay? So in fact, for an arrangement like this, rather than n factorial, right, if you want to generalize, even though I don't see that much point in doing it, the general thing for this is, well, this is n minus 1 factorial. Simple. If you had 12 people to sit around an Asian banquet table, then there would be 12 minus 1, 11 factorial ways to arrange them. Make sense? Okay, now, one more way to think about it. Okay. Um, you can think about it in these terms, that you're, you're doing this kind of setup, but then you're overcounting, right? So you correct by dividing, and that's what you end up with. The alternative, which is a way I like to think about it, because it fits into how we think about conditions and all that kind of thing, is you think about 
the circle as a condition. And you know, we've, when we look at arrangements for probability, you always deal with conditions first. They change your sample space or whatever. And then you let the situation unfold. So here's the way I would pick it. Okay. When you think about that first person, I think it was Savinda, okay? When you think about that first person, really all of these chairs are identical. They don't actually have any differences between them, okay? Because if we sit him here, we just rotate the table and he's at another chair. Well, it's the same thing, okay? So here's the approach I have. You take your first person and you just lock them in place. You lock them in place, okay? Now you don't worry about where they're going to sit because all of the places are the same to them, okay? Now, what are you going to do? Well, you have three things to fill and you have three objects to fill them with. And unlike this situation, you can't rotate these, right? This is a line like this, right? It's just that, well, there's only three spots. There's your n minus one, okay? So your first person, you just lock him in and then there are three, two, one ways to arrange what's left, three factorial. Does that make sense? 